Okay, I think we're ready. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'll do a little intro to start the interview, and then we'll uh, we'll just we'll start chatting. Okay, sounds good. All right, metalheads, this is DJ Rem, Metalhead Radio, and I have Eric from the band Scarred on the line. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. So, uh, tell me what's going on with the band right now. Uh, we are actually in the process of um, getting some shows together and uh, recording a new album for uh, 2012. Very cool. So, the tr- I have like four tracks. Is there more tracks than that out there? Is there like an EP out there right now, or is that like what's out there? Um, actually, that's the only thing that we do have. There was a, an album out back in uh, 2006 that was released by Scarred, but it was with a whole different lineup of uh, musicians. Um, so this was released, um, The Haunting Memories was released in 2009, and um, we, you know, pretty much went with that for the most part, because we didn't look back at the, uh, the the last album that was released prior to the EP. So it's just the EP right now as we speak, but uh, as soon as we go into the studio and release the, the upcoming album, then, yeah, we'll have that one as a follow-up to the EP. Very cool. Okay, so I know this kind of went back and forth. At first, it was gonna, the interview was going to be with you, and then it was going to be with the whole band, and then now it's back with you. What um? So being that it's just uh, it's just we just got Eric here. We'll go ahead and mention the rest of the members of the band and what their spots are. Okay, uh, so we have um, John on guitar, John Toscano on guitar, and uh, Ray Solario on bass and Andy Solis on drums, and myself on vocals. And that's what makes up Scarred. Excellent. And how long have you guys all been together as a group? I have been with the band for close to five years. And uh, Ray has been with the band for about four. Um, Andy and John, um, Andy got in the band in 2000. Seven or six, I believe, and John's the founder, so he's he's been around for a while, man. He's been, you know, from the get-go, 2001, when SCART um, evolved. Okay, and then, so, how do you know how, how everything kind of came to be, how the band originally formed then? Uh, for the most part, um, you know, uh, John and his singer back then, I guess they were the ones who tried to get something going with, you know, with the, uh, the whole new sound of metal and, and all that, and uh, it progressed to them picking up musicians here and there. I believe uh, even uh, Jim Durkin of, uh, I forgot the name of the band, but he, he, was, he was in the band as well at one point. They had two guitar players, so... So, and ever since then, musicians came and went through the years till finally 2009 hit, and that's when I joined up with the band. And um, and ever since then, we've just been a solid unit from 2009 on. Very cool. Yeah. And you guys, you guys are out in Cali, right? We're out in California, you're right. What part of California are you guys based out of? Uh, well. Everybody's scattered, but uh, our studio is in Downey, California. So, so uh, okay, yeah, when, got, when you... Yeah, when we've, we've got Andon and, and Ray um, that live out in San Pedro, California. And we've got John and Downey, and I'm in Pasadena. So we're kind of spread out at the time, you know, where we all live, but we all meet up in, in Downey. So I guess Downey's our main headquarters. All right. So when you say your studio, do you guys have, like, have your own studio? Right. It's actually John's, and, um, you know, turned turned a room into a studio, which is, a, it really looks like a studio. It's a real studio, and uh, that's where we pretty much, um, you know, practice. Nice. So are you guys going to record this, are you guys going to record this, this new album there, or are you going to... No, we 
have um, the, the last EP that we released, uh, the Haunting Memory EP, was recorded at um, this place called. Uh, oh my God, I can't I can't remember the name right now. I'm totally drawing a blank, but it's this guy E that mixed everything down for us, and um, you know we're pretty much going to the same place to do the whole album um, to record the album and release that. Okay. So, yeah, we were pretty happy with them. Very good. Very good. What, uh, so what's the music scene like where you guys are at? Do you guys get a lot of shows? Uh, we're, we're getting a lot of good shows. We've played with some major bands. Um, we're, you know, we've, we've done some big shows and then we've done some not so big shows, which are, uh, little clubs here and there. But for the most part, we try and go for the bands that kind of fit our genre a little bit. Right. So, yeah, so last show was uh, with Armored Saint, and then uh, that, that went really well. Um, you know, we seem to have the same style. Uh, we did one with Wasp a while back, Hammerfall. So, you know, we try and fit ourselves in the same type of category as the bands that we're playing with, which is kind of odd because our our music is really technical it's it's a little hard to find the right band to really put us with you know well i appreciate that because it means you don't fall into one one genre you know right right exactly so i mean to and to me these days it's pretty unique to find a band that you that doesn't kind of stick to one style so it's pretty cool right exactly well the thing too is that um everyone in the band has different um, background so everybody grew up with their style of music but at the same time we had that one root with what which was Iron Maiden so everybody circled themselves around Iron Maiden but then you know like my bass player Ray he I mean the bass player in the band he he listens from Rush to Sabbath to the police so he grew up playing that style and you know so he learned a lot of different styles doing that and uh, and Andy, same thing. Rush and you know just different styles. It varies. And John, just all metal. And same with me. I mean, I grew up with everything as well. So you know, everybody has a lot of different influences that they put together to build this band. Well, and that's that's really nice because I think I think when you have that wide variety of musical tastes, it it comes through in your music. It makes you a stronger musician. That's just my own personal opinion, but. Right, exactly. I mean, it, it really puts us to the test, um, you know, to writing, the writing aspect of it. And uh, as for me, it, it really put me to the test with my singing ability to see what I can really get away with, you know, and uh, use influences that I had in my own. I'm trying to really separate myself from um, the influences that I have and create my own style, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's hard to really escape all that since I grew up listening to Dio all my life and Maiden, so that's what I pretty much project for the most part. Well, I'm going to say right now, you're a kick-ass singer, so there. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. So, you know, I just, while well, I'm sitting here thinking while you're talking, right. and when you... When you record, when you get this album recorded and you're ready to release, or you know after you release, or whatever process you go through, we should um, get to back together, have the whole band on, and we'll do like we'll you know help push the new album. Right, right. I think that would be uh, that would be really good, um, just because of the fact they can give their inputs on you know how they feel about it. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to go through me. All you know, um, so I am. The spirit of the band, it's, it's a little funny that, you know, but it just works that way sometimes. Right, well, plus, if I have the whole band, then I can uh, I can get dirt on you from them, you know? Ah, yeah, <laughs> not, a, not a good thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like to keep that hidden, little secrets here and there. Yeah, I know, you know? I know. Yeah, Nothing to incriminate the, uh, yourself. Belt. What um? So what got you into music? And you know, when you were growing up, what 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 did you grow up listening to? What uh, what made you decide you wanted to be a singer, a musician? Um, I I wasn't really singing. I was more into you know the whole BMX thing and stuff like that. Uh, a neighbor.
neighbor of ours um, in Monrovia, California, uh, um, his dad was a drummer for a band. I think he even actually played for Van Halen when Van Halen was in the band, you know. And um, I'd, come o- I'd go over his house and we'd mess around on the drums, you know, play around with his mic and stuff like that. And, you know, he had like a little studio in the backyard. So we'd go in there and just mess around. And ever since then, you know, I just fell into listening to the bands that I was growing up with in, um, in like, junior high, which was, like, Zeppelin, ACDC, Ted Nugent, and, and all that. So I wasn't really into Maiden yet or any heavy things like that. So, But I was pretty much into the rock and roll thing, you know, and that's what got me started. And ever since then, I, you know, joined choir at school and uh, and did that for a couple of years. So that's what got the motors going. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I tell you, the first time I heard Metallica and Megadeth, I was hooked. That was like seventh grade. I'm like, okay, metal music. I love it. Right, right, exactly. You just can't pull away from it, man. It's 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 an addiction, you know. Uh, some people are addicted to pot. Some people are addicted to beer. I mean, metal is just going to be all the, all around all the time, you know. It's never going to die. It's never going to go away. So it's here to stay. And I like it because uh, it's it's growing, you know, here in the States. Uh, I'd like it to grow a little bit more like Europe because Europe, it's really huge in Europe. Oh, it's uh, amazing. Yeah, but in, in the U.S., it still has a little bit of ways, but it, it's moving. It's really moving. How? Seems like Americans want to listen to Justin Bieber and Nickelback and that kind of crap. Yeah, that's got to stop sometime. I mean, if I have to put my foot down somewhere or some up something, you know, I definitely will if I get the chance to. Yeah, well, let's tag team that because I'm all about <laughs> that, man. God. Right, right. Now, I won't tell my daughter I said that, though, because she's seven right. and she loves Justin Bieber. Oh, my God. Oh, really? Yeah, I, so haven't, does, uh, I have not so converted my, her yet. Yeah, so does my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what it is, but um, I guess he's just got something that uh, that I don't have that'll really, you know, <laughs> yeah. that, you know, each his own. All right, so enough about that crap. What um? Right. <laughs> so what? Uh, just tell everybody, you know, what's different about you guys. What is what makes you know. What is it about Scarred that people should listen to you guys? You know, when the album comes out, they should listen and go buy it. You know, what sets you guys apart? The uh, new material that we're working on, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a musician's album, pretty much. But uh, it's like, if, you, if you're into, like, Opeth, uh, Nevermore, if you're into, like, um, some, some Iron Maiden here and there, some Dio... It's a combination of all that, all in one, and some death. Me- I mean, some black metal. Because you know, some of the screams I'm like doing, um, I pick up from black metal, and I like those screams. You know, those those, those high pitched screams. And then again, I like coming down and you know doing some heavy stuff. But uh, John, Ray, and Andy, they've been coming up with some some really amazing music. Uh, it's it's really something to look out for. A lot of different time changes, a lot of uh, a lot of intricate parts here and there, a lot of runs. You know, it's it's just it's just, it's going to be an amazing album. I'll tell you that. You know, it's it's, it's different from our last uh, EP that we put out. All right, cool. So I guess the further touch on that whole uh, your that comment there, what what you guys have created a process for for writing and doing that. I mean, how do you guys like get together and I guess just what's your process? Yeah, well, um, John, the guitarist, uh, he usually comes up with uh, some ideas. I don't know. Sometimes he, he told me one time he was sitting in the can and he just came up with a riff, and I go, okay, well, <laughs> I'll break out with it. So he uh, he'll come up with something really intricate and something really nice and good to to work with, and uh, Ray just keeps up with him on bass. I don't know how these guys do it but they're just like right on dead on you know and Andy with Ray and so they'll they'll create this this the music and um, you know they'll work on it for a little bit and I'll come in I won't sing right away on it I'll, I'll take a little bit of time to kind of you know have it resonate 
and uh, feel it out a little bit before I really try and throw some vocals in there because I don't want to throw myself off or anybody else off if I, if I put stuff in there. So it pretty much starts with the music and, um, and then I follow it up with some vocals and try and do some harmonies. And uh, the writing process comes after that, where I come up with ideas for lyrics. Okay, so when when you write, when you're actually writing the lyrics, are you do you ever have like any kind of do you kind of have like a theme in mind when you're writing, or is it just kind of you know whatever comes out? Well, sometimes it's whatever comes out. Um, when I'm, you know, when uh, when they rehearse, when we rehearse, and uh, music starts popping. And I just I just flow with whatever comes out of my mouth, and um, Andy, who's the master recorder, takes that and sends me the uh, the music. So I then take that home and uh, work lyrics around the, the melody lines that I put out during the time of uh, rehearsal, and I just work with that and see what kind of words I can come up with or lyrics. But I, I pretty much base my stuff on. Um, real life happenings that have happened to me or you know what's happening now in the world and sometimes I'll base it on some you know some criminal show on TV it, 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 it depends on the mood and the mood of the music right that's cool yeah. I bet some of the, I bet some of your jam sessions are just amazing that's that's awesome it, it, it's pretty crazy it you know we, we, we have some really good uh, material that we have some we've kind of tucked back that we decided you know it wasn't going to work for us so um, some of it we'll take pieces from and we'll build from that and uh, but yeah the jam sessions are happening man I mean you know the guys are really good musicians so I'm, I'm lucky to be you know around such great musicians yeah it sounds like you guys have real you guys real you gel real well so that's awesome yeah a lot of joking around as well you know if it's not if that does not happen, then, you know, it's really hard. And I've been through a lot of bands. Um, it's hard getting, it's almost like a family, you know. Right, like yeah. When you join, when, yeah, when you join up with a band, it's like having three girlfriends at the same time. So each has their own mood swings and whatnot, you know, and so you kind of have to deal with that um, piece by piece. Every single day you have to work with each member and figure out, you know, how everybody works and see if you can flow with that and you know and there's a lot of people out musicians out there with you know really you know that i can't i can't even be in a room with so these guys i can definitely you know my life i can hang with them very cool so how often do you guys get together then uh, so far we've been just rehearsing once a week uh we've done twice a week rehearsals but we've just cut back um you know just Letting the music resonate, you know, and uh, giving it a little bit of time for us to kind of, and then we get together and then uh, we work on the music and get the process going from there. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, uh, go sidetrack question here: Where did the, how did the name of the band come to be? How, how did they pick? How did, how was Scarred picked? John says that. Uh, you know, this is what he said. Uh, he says on every interview that we've been on is that I guess it's you know everybody's scarred one way or another. But uh, as far as the name, I guess they, they just dug it up from somewhere. That I don't really know. You're gonna really have to talk to John about that and how, um, how the name became. That's all, that's that's all good, man. Well, the next time we talk, I'll uh, yeah. Right, right. Definitely bring that up. I'll be like, dude, where's this name come from? <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be happy to answer that. Okay, so here's one of the random questions I like to throw out there. If uh, if I was to grab your your iPod or your MP3 player, however you listen to music, what would I find you listening to right now? Classical. <laughs> like like Beethoven or like like Beethoven. Um, yeah, I listen to a lot of classical music, man. Uh, you know, I just like the, the the whole you know mood in in classical. Uh, you know, I uh, Beethoven, Strauss, all that. I mean, I I just love the way the strings, the violins, and the cello, which is actually my favorite instrument, is the cello. 
Um, just that. It, it puts out that eerie, almost evil sound to where you listen to it and it's like, wow, you know, this is like, this is something else. And not that we try and base our stuff on classical or I try and base my stuff on, but it's just something I love listening to. And once in a while I listen to metal. I just don't want it to be, you know, to consume to where I don't know where I'm at with my own style of music. So I want to make sure, that, you know, I listen to the metal here and there, but uh, classical for the most part, that'll be the number one thing on my book. Okay. So so what do you think of these, you know, there's some good uh, power metal bands like out of Europe that do, you know, that kind of mix the classical in with their, uh, with their, with their music. What do you think of that? Hmm. Um, that's like, well, are, are you talking about like, um... Well, the one band that I listen to a lot is called Power Wolf. Okay. I don't think I've heard of them. You should check them out. They... Oh, okay. It's like metal and classical and almost a little bit of... The, the dude could sing opera. Put it that way. Oh, wow. Wow. That's amazing. It's killer stuff, though. So, check it out. Wow. wow. I just, I just yeah, was I curious like... because, you know... You're a metal guy, and you listen to classical, so I was thinking, you know, you might dig that. This would fit, fit him really good. Yeah, well, I like um, I like listening to a lot of opera, too, but I wouldn't want to throw myself in that field. But, you know, it, to me, it's really crunch-heavy with, you know, the Dio-type stuff and, right. you know, the screams and and some clean... You know, we, we do have a ballad coming out as well on this uh, um, upcoming album. So it it should be a good thing for us as well. It, it's a it's a pull off from, I mean not a pull off, but it's just a draw away from from the haunting memories uh, ballad. Okay, well I, I look forward to hearing it for sure. What's, oh yeah, it should come out good. What's your favorite song to perform live right now? Um, I like all our songs. We have this song. We act, we're actually performing some of the. the the songs that are going to be on the album, um, a song called Demonic Generator. Uh, you know, I, I posted a couple of it up on Facebook there, but um, that's one of my favorites. I like just rocking out to that. It's, I think it's a rocker song. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people kind of commented on it and said that there's a little bit of Sabbath deal feel to it. So, you know, I was a little happy about that. Um, and it's just heavy, man. It's driving. So, but we have material that's that I'm also excited to, you know, playing live with. But uh, until that's all recorded and done with, I think it would make a little bit more sense for me. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Well, yeah. I, I like it all too. What I have, but Rise Like the Sun is definitely my favorite tune of the four I have. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think that <laughs> that song is so killer. Yeah. That's that's the. Um, yeah, that's a that's you know that's 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 usually our uh, finisher. That's that's what we usually finish with at the, every show. But uh, it's really quite you know it, it's got that power in it towards towards the end. You want to just finish heavy and hard, you know, and fast. So you know, and I was telling the guys that that um, we need to come up with more, you know, a little bit more faster type you know material, which is what we're kind of writing as well right now. So it it should be interesting. That's cool, and you know, I really I dig the differences in the songs too. So it, it, it's nice, and it doesn't all have to be heavy and pop. You know, I don't need if you know what I'm trying to say. Right, right. Yeah, to me, it's all um, it, it's funny because the, the, that whole it's only four songs, um, and they all have their different moods. You know, and, right? Exactly. And that's what uh, to me, you know, makes a good start kick of an EP is you know, different swing moods, you know, it's not just, okay, we're just going to pump out, you know, all metal, all night, you know, all fast, you know, stuff and make everybody freak out and trip. So we wanted something to where it'll slow down, it'll pick up, it'll be dark, kind of heavy. And some people even said um, Worms of the Universe, I think it's the third track. Yeah, it's a good track uh, too. Yeah, third track on the EP is, uh, you know, they compared it to like Doom. So, you know, we've got, we've got kind of made me type stuff and then the ballad and then, uh, you know, kind of like a, I don't know, um, you know, like a disco hi-hat from hell type thing in the <laughs> end with, you know, first encounter. Very so cool. It's, yeah, it's a whole different swing mood with that album or that 
CD. So, okay, let's it's 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 uh, shameless plug time now. Is there any is there a place people can buy the EP? Uh, they can actually go on our website, which is um, scarredmetal.com, and they can purchase the uh, EP from there. And then we've got shirts and uh, other fun little toys that they can uh, purchase. Um, we also have, uh, I think, little bottle openers and stuff like that. So, yeah, some pretty cool stuff in there. Very cool. Oh, yeah. And hey, before yeah. I, before I forget, I want to uh, I want to thank uh, Scott Wallace for making the awesome the awesome promo flyer for us. Right. Thank you, Scott. That Scott is the man. I'm telling you, that guy is a genius. When it it, it, it he comes up with these crazy, you know flyers and then uh he, he did this thing for me where you know he had my name my picture on it and i'm using it as my my wall thing now on uh, facebook and the guy's just amazing on graphics on, on yeah thank you scott yeah he is you know i did last year i did around 50 interviews so i mean he just pumps out them flyers for me like nothing it's it's amazing Right, right, and it's funny because uh, he even he liked uh, Rise Like the Sun so much he made his own um, version of uh, a video, which includes him in the video, which is really cool. I thought uh, when I first saw it, and he put it out there, and I was like, "Wow, you know, this guy really knows how to work with you know with his computer." So it's like it's, it was amazing to see that. Yeah, and if it, and to tell you what, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even have heard of you guys because I was actually doing a show one night, and, right. and, and he's like, he's like, man, you, you have to play this band I got. I'm like, okay, and, right. and I start playing you guys. I'm like, I'm like, why you been holding back on me, man? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, thank you, Scott, man. He, yeah, he's he's something else. You know, he's always, and I, I, the thing I like about him too is that he's such a cool guy. Um, you know, every time I put a post up, he'll, he'll, you know, get on that right away, and, uh, you know, we talk, we chat here and there, and uh, he's just a really cool guy, man. Nice guy to work with for you as well. Yeah, well, and you know what, and that's the that's the whole thing. The, the Metalhead Radio family, I mean, everybody on this station, we all do this because we have a passion for music, you know. Right. It's, we all do this as a hobby. No one gets paid. It's it's just something we do. We, you know, we put I put a lot of time and effort into to what I do because it means that much to me. And then you know, and when I get it, when I get to hear a band like you guys, somebody and somebody I really dig, and then get to talk to you, you know, you just right. you just made my week, man. Oh, thank you so much, man. So, I appreciate that. And and you know what? Thank you for even having me on the radio. I, I really appreciate that, and I appreciate this interview. Yeah. Oh, it's cool, man. So, um, anything else you'd like to tell the world? Well, I have you. Yeah, we actually also um, have a new management company that we're working with, uh, and they're a couple of ladies that really deserve a lot because they've been pumping us left and right on Facebook and trying to get contacts for us and stuff like that. So, um, you know, I'd like to thank uh, Hunger Strike Management, and this is um, Buffy and Deanne. So to both of them, thank you for, you know, for the support and, you know, all the time and all that that they put into trying to get us out there. Um, hopefully we'll, we will get some really killer shows this year. Uh, we're looking to make it over to Europe, um, hopefully to Japan as well, and try and do some shows out there. So we're looking at some festivals and some, you know, some concerts at some major venues. So that's what we're looking at for 2012, some look to look out for. Very cool. I wish you all the best of luck for sure. I hope uh, hope everything works out just like you guys want. So. Well, thank you so much. And like I said, when the album when the album's done, I want to do this again. Oh, we definitely will, and I will tell the guys. So um, you know, it, I just got caught off guard, but uh, I will definitely let the guys know, and we will definitely be ready for this. Yeah. Well, and don't get me wrong. You know, it's not a bad thing that we're just talking. So. Right. Right. Exactly. But, you know, if it's another chance to talk to you and, and get to talk to the band, too, hey, I'm down. Right, right, definitely. And uh, I'm sure they'll be they'll be up to doing this because, um, you know, and, to, I, you know, just to get their thoughts out, uh, they have a lot to say as well. I know Andy does and John and Ray, so they're really cool guys, easy to talk to, all down to earth. We're not, you 
know these big rock star gods or anything like that, but we just like to play our music and get it out there and enjoy the crowd and everybody that listens to it or people that want to listen to it. Yeah, and I was I was looking at the photos and stuff you have on your website, and you de- guys definitely uh, you really get into it. You can tell you're really enjoying yourself, so that's cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. See, that's the thing of um, being in a band is... Uh, I see some bands out there, they do their thing, they, you know, they're all standing in one spot, they're, you know, not moving around so much, and they're just so concentrated on, you know, just looking down on their guitars and basses and, you know, making sure that everything's in the right spot, you know. Some bands, that's fine, but us, we just like to, you know, just give it 200%, man, and uh, if it means cutting a wrong note here and there once in a while, that's fine. We just want to make sure that the crowd's having a great time, and you know, they'll come back for the next show, you know, and um, hopefully, you know, buy the album and get to check us out again. No, I totally get that because, you know, who goes to a show to watch a bunch of guys stand there in one spot all night? I mean, I mean, it's a show. It's not called a show for nothing. Right. Yeah, like, uh, I guess uh, you call them shoegazers. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I like it. Right. We're gonna, cool. that, you should coin that term. Shoegazing. Your ass ain't nothing but a shoegazer. That's right, you guys. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you know, we we want to make sure that you know we sound great, and uh, you know, and we give the the people what they want because you know people pay money to come check out your show, so you don't you don't let them down. You know that's why I under, under I don't understand Axl Rose sometimes. You know he can be such an ass and just walk off stage and leave the people hanging for just a little nail cut or whatever, you know. I I believe in doing it, man. Just whatever happens, you let the crowd, give the crowd what they want. That's what they came to pay, you know, that's what they paid for. That's what they're going to see. Right. Oh, well, that's very cool. I'm, it's, it's nice. It's refreshing to hear a band say that. So thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so one last thing to ask you before I let you go. If you can make a few radio tags for me. Yeah. So, the first one, if you could say, this is Eric from Scarred, and you're listening to DJ Rem at MetalheadRadio.com. Okay. This is Eric from Scarred, and you are listening to DJ Rem on MetalheadRadio.com. Yeah! Awesome. Okay. So, the next one, do the exact same thing, but just leave me out and just make just a generic station tag that just says Metalhead Radio. Okay, with my name as well? Yep. Okay. This is Eric Claro from the band Scarred, and you're listening to MetalheadRadio.com. All right, and the last one, we have to make a tag for Scott, so. This is Eric Claro from the band Scarred, and you are, oh, man, I got to do that one again. I'm sorry. And uh, his, um, his, um, when he when he he doesn't do shows very often, but when he does, it's uh, Deuce on the Loose. What is it? He calls himself Deuce on the Loose. Deuce on the Loose? No, Loose. Loose, like Loose. No, L O O S E. O S E Loose. Yep. So Deuce on the Loose. Deuce on the Loose. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. This is Eric Claro from the band Scarred. And you, oh man! <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm adding this to my blooper <laughs> session. <laughs> Sorry about that, man. <laughs> oh man. Okay. You got yourself together. <laughs> Hang on a second. No problem. Deuce, deuce on on the loose. Yeah. Uh, so I'm saying this is Eric Clara from Scarred. And you're listening to Deuce on the Loose at and Metalhead Radio. Deuce on the Loose on Metalhead Radio. Okay. Yep. Ready? Yep. This is Eric Clara from the band Scarred, and you are listening to Deuce on the Loose on MetalheadRadio.com. Very good, man. Appreciate it. He'll uh, good? He'll be very happy. All right, cool. <laughs> So. All right, man. So uh, let me know when it's going to air, or you know, so I can give heads up to uh, to those who did not get the chance to listen to the interview. 
Yeah, I'll probably be able to. Um, I'll probably be able to get it on next month. I'm thinking. Let me check my calendar real quick. I'm thinking next Monday at ten, probably. Next Monday at ten. Okay. Yeah, just let me double check. Make sure I don't already have another interview scheduled. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can play it back next next Monday at 10 p.m. So I'll just have him update the flyer. Okay, update the flyer, and uh, yeah, if you can have, have put it out there, so yep. you know, because I know a, couple, a lot of people uh, checked in today and listened in. So, but uh, okay, cool, man. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thanks again, and uh, have a great night, dude. All right, thank you. Take care. Yeah, you too. Bye.